Nakamura, Brian, the gruesome twosome, on a quest to decide the best. Two warriors with unconventional weapons, the most psycho knee, the Kinshasa, and the most devastating weapons of all, the human body, who will be the last man standing and walk away as the NLW champion, Undertaker, and his Ministry of Darkness, Kenny Omega. The mission? Take down this evil empire, a fortress of hell for the dead man's games, his invincible army tasked with taking down the cleaner, caged inside an impenetrable structure. Tonight, men and women will fight for their lives. Tonight, fighters do combat for the prestige, the honor for survival. Welcome to NLW and prepare to enter the dragon. athletes will be in the fight of their lives here tonight on NLW's first pay-per-view since Wrestlemania 4. Tonight men and women will fight in that ring as they enter the dragon. Hello everyone it is No Limits Wrestling here back again with another huge event and we are gonna start with Mr. Money in the Bank. And you see the charismatic Extreme Enigma, Jeff Hardy, holding the Money in the Bank briefcase, which he won at WrestleMania. But tonight, he must focus on his opponent, the Bastard Pack. Jeff Hardy has had a recent attitude change. That much has been very clear. The way he has treated the likes of the Hurricane, his somewhat lackadaisical attitude, Although the fans still appreciate Jeff Hardy, there is certainly an element of him now that he could be getting a little bit too big for his boots and his brother Matt has been trying to ground Jeff Hardy. Well, I'll tell you what, if the words of Matt Hardy can't ground his brother Jeff, a beating at the hands of this man certainly will ground you. This is the bastard Pack, and Pack has had his fair share of opportunities at the NLW title and he is furious at the fact that Jeff Hardy doesn't seem to be taking the Money in the Bank briefcase too seriously. Pack believes that he should be the world champion and that it's a travesty that someone like Jeff Hardy has an opportunity at the world title anytime he wants with that Money in the Bank briefcase. And when this all started, when Pack attacked the Hurricane, after the Hurricane was scheduled to have a match, and then Matt Hardy was on the receiving end of a beatdown from Pack, but Jeff finally helped his brother after weeks on the sidelines. And look at that! An incredible dropkick that takes Pack down and now Pack is on the outside and what is Jeff Hardy thinking now springboard whisper in the wind corkscrew plancher wipes out Pack. and it was this past week on NLW the Hardys in a tag match against Sanity Pack came out but look out for him now for the Fosby flop over the top wipes out Jeff Hardy and to my point earlier, Pat came out to distract Jeff Hardy and Hardy left Matt Hardy to fend for himself against Sanity. So I don't know how Matt is going to be feeling watching this one. I know how Jeff's feeling right now. He's feeling sore after being wiped out by Pac on the outside. And as they're back in the ring, here comes Pac, springs in with the cutter. 
And Jeff Hardy in trouble and a shooting star press. Standing that time in a hook of the leg. But a kick out from the charismatic Enigma. And I have to say, Pac has impressed me recently and has the boot but a back kick from Jeff. And Jeff Hardy now going to follow Pac to the outside but what is the plan? He's holding those stairs. And now look at the poetry in motion but look at Pac. Catches him out and drops him on the steel. And now on top of the steel stairs and oh my god. A power bomb on the top of those steel stairs. And Jeff Hardy may have been wiped out and have a disc slipped in that back thanks to Pac. And that power bomb, the fans aren't happy about it, but look at this impact again. Right on the top of those stairs. And now you can see that Pac is wanting to go to the top rope and deliver more punishment. The missile drop kick connects with a sickening thud as Jeff Hardy tries to get himself together but Pac now saying this man has a world title opportunity and now the brutalizer has been locked in. This move that he's used to make the world champion Daniel Bryan submit locked in but Jeff Hardy gets to the ropes and Speaking of Brian, he's facing Nakamura in our main event in a last man standing match for the NLW title. But look at Jeff. He wants to be champion as well. Wiping out Pack with a whisper in the wind. And now Jeff Hardy tries to get back into the contest as best he can. But it's going to be difficult against a man like Pack. And look at this. Goes to the twist of fate, but turn into a German suplex crumpling the spine of Jeff Hardy and the charismatic Mr. Money in the bank oh no he's back on his feet and delivers the poison spike for Anna. and a super kick from Pac what an incredible way to kick off into the dragon here tonight and Jeff Hardy is down and out and Pac he's on the top rope wants to go for the black arrow but there's Jeff Hardy to stop him Hardy stops him on the top, but oh no. Oh my god. Brainbuster from the top. Spiking Jeff Hardy from the top rope to the canvas. And he somehow kicks out. How the hell did Jeff Hardy kick out of that? Pat can't believe it. But he can't be standing in disbelief for too much longer. He needs to capitalise, and that's exactly what he's doing. Pack on the top rope. Going for the black arrow. Oh my god. Turn around into the twist of fate. And Jeff Hardy running to the top. And the swan tom bomb. And Jeff Hardy picks up the victory over Pack. What an incredible counter to an insane manoeuvre and Mr Money in the Bank Jeff Hardy gets a win over Pac well all of those things that Pac said about Jeff not deserving to be Mr Money in the Bank can be put to rest here tonight he earned every part of this victory the super kick I thought that Pac was going to win it right here with a top rope brain buster and then when he went for the black arrow Jeff Hardy turned it into a twist of fate ran right to the top took advantage of the opportunity and hit the swanton bomb onto his opponent to secure the victory well i know that matt hardy is going to be somewhere in the back proud of his brother for getting his well you know what together and finally picking up a victory an important crucial victory for mr money in the bank pack suffers a defeat but the charismatic enigma is victorious Shinsuke last week on NLW there was a big brawl to finish that night what is your game plan heading into tonight's last man standing match for the NLW title against Daniel Bryan 
Well, Shinsuke Nakamura not wanting to have any interviews. He is laser focused on Brian here tonight. Well, we shift our focus now to our next contest. Our opener was so impactful and high pace, and you gotta believe that our next matchup is gonna be just as extreme, just as intense, and just as explosive. And speaking of explosive, here tonight at Enter the Dragon, Seth Rollins is about to burn it down. Seth Rollins, the former NLW World Champion, who has perhaps lost his way in the past few months, but tonight can get his momentum back on track. His opponent, though, is being managed by a lady legend in the wrestling industry. Seth awaits his opponent. El Idolo. Andrade Cien Almas. Now being managed by his new manager and business partner, Lita. This is an interesting pairing. And in Andrade's first official match here in NLW, how do you think he is going to fare? Lita debuted several weeks ago to confront Seth Rollins, who was making an open challenge. We thought it was going to be Lita accepting the open challenge. But instead, Andrade sneaking up behind Seth Rollins, delivering the DDT and announcing to the world that Andrade is now being managed by Lita. And this could work as a very effective pairing. We shall see here tonight, however, in Andrade's first official match here in his NLW debut, live on pay-per-view on Enter the Dragon. And look at that elbow, that back elbow from Andrade. And well, he may be cocky, but he can certainly back it up in that ring. And a tilt well backbreaker, but a kick out from Seth Rollins. Rollins in trouble now. Andrade hooking the arm and trying to pull the arm out of the socket. And on the top rope and delivers the reverse DDT. And you have to wonder, what has Lita told Andrade in his ear? What kind of pieces of advice do you think he's going to give him? Oh my goodness, look at that athleticism. Folks, that is insane. The corkscrew dive as Lita cheers on her man, her client. Let's take a look at this again. Roll is on the outside and then the springboard into a corkscrew moonsault splash to the outside. And it goes for a clothesline but misses. Roll is from behind and there's that ripcord knee. Andrade caught out and Lita may sense that it's the end. Andrade in trouble goes for the curb stomp but misses. And a handspring Pele kick to the skull of Seth Rollins. Well, the architect, his game plan is falling apart. Ripped off the ropes, but hangs on. And a boot up. Rollins on the apron and the springboard clothesline delivered to Andrade. Oh, Idolo, he's competed in Mexico, Japan, and now here in NLW. Look at the shining as Rollins, as Rollins goes for the buckle bar, but code red. Holy hell. Almost like a Mexican destroyer that time, spiking Seth Rollins. And now Andrade going to the top, waiting for Seth, but Seth back at him. Top rope superplex into the Falcon Arrow. And you see that Andrade goes right over to Lita, so Lita can give him a pep talk and trying to cheer him up on the outside, but look out for Seth Rollins. Rollins running off the ropes with the tope, oh my god! The tope wiping out Lita! Oh my goodness. Well, she may have had some derogatory things to say to Seth Rollins, but no one wants to see competitors not involved in the match get hurt, and Rollins checking on her, and that was a nasty landing. And Rollins making sure the Lita is okay. May not agree with her personally, but got away a minute. What the hell is this? 
and she's fine. And now Andrade with the moonsault. But a kick out from Rollins. Lita provided the distraction and that Hurricane Runner into the stairs. And that allows Andrade to take advantage. They will stop at nothing to get the advantage but misses the knees and now a thrust kick from Seth Rollins. May have been not loopy from that move from Lita. Going for the curb stomp but caught. DVD in the corner and the knees now picks him up and the DDT and Andrade picks up the victory in his first NLW match a massive win here over Seth Rollins well Lisa raises the hand of our new client as Seth Rollins lays flat on the canvas first of all it was Lita hitting the Rana on the stairs then when Rollins tried to get back into the contest the damage had already been done and this incredible counter from the curb stomp into the Death Valley driver to the corner and the knees crushing the face and bones orbital bones of Seth Rollins and that allowed Andrade to hook the arm deliver the DDT and pick up his first win in the company and they are certainly proud of themselves. Win by any means necessary. That seems to be the Andrade motto. El Idolo celebrates his victory. And you've got to wonder where Rollins goes from here. But take nothing away from Andrade. A huge victory here tonight at Enter the Dragon. Well, the fun don't stop. We've got another championship match, our first title match of the evening. And it is for the X Division Championship. And arising from underneath the stage, here comes the master of the 619, San Diego Zone, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio. Return to NLW back in September to answer the open challenge of the X Division champion Ricochet. And Rey Mysterio and Ricochet are very happy to be sharing the ring with each other tonight. Although there was some tension back on episode 84 after their tag match. But that tension is just going to be amplified now that they have this title match on their hands and the challenge is in the ring now we await the arrival of the champion the X Division champion Ricochet and it was Ricochet himself who won that title on episode 73 in an open challenge and tonight he puts it on the line in his first title defence here tonight against Rey Mysterio and Ricochet said it himself on NLW. He was a fan of Rey Mysterio growing up and it's an honour for him to be in a match with him tonight. But the result, as Ricochet stated, would be Ricochet walking out as the X Division Champion. But Rey Mysterio has something to say about that. And this is going to be hard to call at times. They are both very quick competitors. And lands on his feet, you see what I mean. This one will be very fast paced and could be over in a heartbeat. The monkey flip and both men bridge up. And another monkey flip and an arm ring and look at that handspring. Ricochet with cat-like agility. And he telling him to bring it on but Arana. Ricochet on the outside and a drop kick from Rey Mysterio. And now Ricochet on the floor. Ray Ray running off the ropes and slides out. Crushing him with that splash. Got to take a look at this again. Look at the momentum that Ray built up. And he could have hurt himself very much in that process, but Ray is in control for the meantime. Springboard moonsault, but a kick out from Ricochet. And you know, these two, very innovative, innovative I should say, in their own rights. Ray Mysterio defining Lucha Libre 
style in the United States and Ricochet building up on that goes for a handspring into a sunset flip and a kick out from Ray and Ray with a boot to the side of the skull of Ricochet. Now Ricochet on the floor. Ray with a springboard but got caught with the drop kick from Ricochet. The champion wipes out Ray with the drop kick in midair. As we take a look again at the replay, Ray was in control up until that point. And I think the boot's connected right to the face. And that boot connected to the side of the skull. Ricochet. On the apron, springs in with a clothesline. And now, has a wrist hold. Oh, right into the code red. Code red from Rey Mysterio, but a kick out from Ricochet. And just like that, Rey Mysterio is back into it. And what a DDT. Such an incredible offense displayed from Rey Mysterio here tonight. Ricochet, he's in trouble. And drop kick now into position. Are we going to see it? Dial it up. 619 time. No standing sense fly. And a kick out from Ray. Standing Spanish fly. Could not connect. Instead, Ray Mysterio on the outside again. And Ricochet running off the ropes with a Fosby flop, but lands on his feet. And Rey Mysterio dives out with a Hurricane Rana. What an incredible matchup we are witnessing between two of the best wrestlers in the world today. And it is all in the name of the X Division Championship. Watch again. Ray had this one scouted. Ricochet landed on his feet. Ray came back out, corkscrewed over into a Hurricane Rana on the floor. And that allows Ray. Now going to the top rope. This could be it. Rock splash. Crushing the sternum of the champion. And Ricochet once again in position. And goes to the 619 but misses. And a bicycle kick from Ricochet. And now what is he thinking? He's going to the top rope. Ray in trouble. Oh my god, a shooting star press to a draped Rey Mysterio. Could have cut him in half with that brutal shooting star press from the top rope. And this match is so replay heavy because everything they do will make the highlight reel. They are both human highlight reels, especially with that, that shooting star press from the top rope cutting Rey in half. And Ricochet. Goes after him. Go for it. Oh my goodness though. Kicked in mid-air. Rey Mysterio now with a 619. Ray goes to the top. Ricochet not looping with a 619. But there's Rico to meet him again. What is he planning now? Oh my god, no. Not a crucifix bomb from that height. But a reverse runner and oh my god! He landed on his feet! How did he land on his feet? What a lariat from Ricochet! The athleticism is incredible in the 6.30 cent on splash! And Ricochet retains the X Division Championship. My god, what a match! And Ricochet is your brand new X Division Champion. In fact, he remains your X Division Champion. Thanks to an incredible counter. Let's just go through the closing moments of this match first. The drop kick in midair into the ropes. That insane 619. And then this the Hurricane Rana. And Ricochet lands on his feet. Comes back at him with a jumping lariat and then this. It's a thing of beauty, folks. The 630 splash. And Ricochet is still your X Division champion. But Rey Mysterio, he'll be damned if he didn't put up a hell of a fight. 
and that is exactly the kind of sportsmanship we like to see. The man who grew up idolizing Rey Mysterio has ended up beating him here tonight. They shake hands, they have mutual respect for each other, but I think I speak for everyone when I say I want to see that match once again. Kenny Omega, tonight is more than just hell in a cell between you and I. Tonight, I must make an example out of your sorry soul. You made the choice not to walk away after I beat you at WrestleMania. Clearly hanging you on top of the Titan Tron. Clearly tombstoning you. Clearly that all wasn't enough. Instead, I'm gonna have to beat some respect into you. I need to make an example out of you, Kenny. I hate what you stand for, and I hate that you're still in this company. This is my match. The match I made famous. Hell in a cell. I'm gonna rake your face across that cage. I'm gonna tear apart your flesh, limb by limb. I will leave you a bloody heap in the center of the ring. The Bucks can't help you. The Elite can't help you. You'll be all alone in that ring as you prepare to meet your maker. And Kenny, if you even think about getting up after I've knocked you down, I will make sure that you rest in peace. Well, there's so much going on here tonight. And we keep the ball rolling with our next matchup for the NLW Women's Championship. And about to make her way to the ring, it is the challenger from Dublin, Ireland. This is the man, Becky Lynch. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention what happened during the contract signing this past week. Becky Lynch and Ember Moon, both in the ring to sign the contract for this match here tonight when Ronda Rousey tried to interfere. Ronda Rousey has been spouting for weeks that she should be the number one contender, but the fact is, Becky Lynch seized the opportunity and she won the number one contenders match to get here here tonight. So Ronda Rousey will not factor into this. Becky Lynch finally getting her first women's title shot since returning to the company. But you know very well that Ember Moon has worked very hard to win that title and she will not give it up without a fight. Ember Moon, officially a member of the Metal brand, but as the women's champion, she must defend that title across both shows. And tonight has the duty of putting it on the line against Becky Lynch. Ember Moon won the NLW Women's title at WrestleMania. And tonight, her second title defense. And a roll up, quick one, by Becky, but a back kick from Ember Moon. And now the disarmer, disarmer already applied. Becky Lynch wants to separate the arm, but Ember gets to the ropes. And a leg drop from Becky to Ember Moon. And Ember in the corner, and a big time punch. Becky Lynch now gets caught with a crossbody in for the cover but a kick out from Becky Lynch. And an insiguri and a standing moonsault. These women really going hell for leather early on in this matchup. Ember Moon. Now goes for a handspring splash but gets caught out. And the man with the back exploder to the champion. Now the challenger thinking about going to the top rope. Becky on the top rope. And the missile drop kick wipes out the women's champion. Ember Moon. That may have knocked her out. And now going for the disarmor again. But kips up. And Becky Lynch goes right back at her, but ran into the Hurricane Rana from Ember Moon. And what is Ember thinking now? Ember Moon on the top rope. Oh my god, she went for the eclipse! And turn into the Tiger Driver on the apron. 
the Tiger suplex on the apron. And Ember Moon is down. Well, that may have knocked out both women. Ember Moon went for the eclipse. She got taken down, though. And that... Oh, wait. What the hell is this? Oh, my God. It's Ronda Rousey. And they're stomping on the arm. In the stairs. And now wrenching on that arm. For God's sake. Ronda Rousey ruining this women's title match. And oh, my... Oh my god. Oh my goodness, she could have she could have broken her arm. Ronda Rousey could have broken the champion's arm. Well, Ember Moon came off with the eclipse and then the dragon suplex on the apron and then Ronda Rousey comes in to assault Becky Lynch and Ember Moon. You see there her arm caught in between the stairs and then this stomping on the joint and that's that's just uncalled for Ronda Rousey doesn't like the spotlight not being on her at all times she cost Becky Lynch the women's title she may have injured the women's champion permanently and she just stands there like the entitled spoiled brat she is and Rousey has destroyed the competition here tonight. This has been a huge night already on a lot of fronts. And now we move on to yet another championship match here tonight at Into the Dragon. And making their ways to the ring, the challengers the number one contenders for the tag team titles Chad Gable Jason Jordan American Alpha and American Alpha defeated the former champions The New Day to become number one contenders live here tonight this is American Alpha's first opportunity at the tag team titles after all they had their momentum stunted, getting injured this time last year. And tonight, they have made the greatest comeback we've seen in a long time. But in their way are the NLW Tag Team Champions, Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks. And it is ready for a super kick party here tonight. The Young Bucks won the NLW Tag Team titles from the New Day on episode 80. And since then, they have managed to defend those titles successfully against the Usos. Tonight though, is their first pay-per-view championship defense. The Young Bucks are the only two-time NLW Tag Team Champions in history. And tonight, American Alpha are looking to dethrone them. And the bell sounds and this matchup is underway. Chad Gable with the headlock on Matt Jackson and a roll through into a cover. And now the Olympian on the back foot, but gets back at him with an armbar, but Matt Jackson there with a punch. And goes for a single leg takedown, but a kick from Matt Jackson makes the tag to Nick. A leapfrog and now a double team. But Chad Gable with the double arm drag that catches the Young Bucks off guard. Now makes the tag to Jason Jordan, a collegiate athlete. As the Olympian Chad Gable gets knocked off the apron by Nick Jackson. And now Nick Jackson like a locomotive. You see that brutal kick to the sternum and now jumps off the apron but Jason Jordan catches him with a belly to belly suplex on the floor and Nick could have had his ribs broken by Jason Jordan who throws him back in now and Jordan goes after him but catches the super kick 
into an exploder suplex. And Nick Jackson in trouble here. Chad Gable on the top with the moonsault. Puts the outside leg, but a kick out from Nick Jackson. And now wants to go for the rolling German, but lands on his feet and a spin kick from Nick Jackson. Chad Gable has been in the ring with the best of them. And he's in there with the greatest tag team in the world today, the Young Bucks. There's Matt Jackson, like a house on fire. Now assisting for the Rana and kicking Chad Gable off the apron. And the assist and the Fosby flop over the top. The Young Bucks flying all over the place here in this tag title matchup. Chad Gable gets absolutely wiped out by the diving attack of Nick Jackson. Look at this again. The Fosby flop over the top rope. Chad Gable gets wiped out. And Nick, but drop kicked. Chad Gable drop kicked the leg. And now a monkey flip, buck to buck. And that makes the tag to Jason Jordan. A picture perfect Northern Light suplex, but it's not enough. Matt Jackson somehow kicks out. And Jason Jordan waits for him, but a super kick from Matt Jackson. And now Gable on the apron, and a super kick to Chad Gable, and goes for a third, but caught this time into the ankle lock. The ankle lock. Applied by Jason Jordan. It must run in the family. And he is wrenching on this ankle. And a roll through from Matt Jackson. Jason Jordan on the outside. As Matt makes the tag to Nick. And Chad may not be the legal man. But Nick Jackson's in there to give him the face buster. Now on the apron. And a moonsault to Jason Jordan. American Alpha have been very good in this matchup. But the Young Bucks have just been one step ahead of them in the most recent part, oh my goodness. The assisted 450, crushing the stern of Chad Gable, but here comes Jason Jordan to wipe out both of the Young Bucks. What a counter. As Jason Jordan and Chad Gable now, isolating Nick in the ring. Matt is nowhere to be seen at a grand amplitude. And a swanton from Matt Jackson to break it up. Absolutely incredible what we're witnessing, a Canadian destroyer. Spiking Jason Jordan on his head. The action's coming thick and fast as Chad Gable with the low bridge. The Young Bucks now have to regroup on the outside. Chad Gable, meanwhile, going for a springboard. Moose super kicked. Super kick to Chad Gable. And it wipes him out. And Jason Jordan's legal man. Meanwhile in the ring. Springs in for the Meltzer driver. And the Young Bucks retain the tag team titles. But what a hell of a tag title match. Probably the tag match of the year right there. And the Young Bucks remain the NLW Tag Team Champions. Good grief, what a match. Let's take a look at the closing moments. This beautiful assisted 450 from Nick Jackson. I thought Alpha were going to win it there with a grand amplitude. But it was Matt Jackson to come in, hitting the Swanton and the Canadian Destroyer. And then this. It's a thing of beauty. A double super kick to Chad Gable in mid-air in the moonsault and then the Meltzer driver seals it for the Young Bucks and they remain your NLW Tag Team Champions they outstretch their hands a sign of sportsmanship from the Young Bucks and American Alpha return the favour an incredible show of sportsmanship after an incredible matchup American Alpha though, don't take anything away from them. And what the hell is this? And the shutter machine. F 
FTR is back and we have not seen these two men since they assaulted American Alpha putting Alpha on the shelf and after that they were suspended but apparently the suspension has been lifted Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, FTR are back and the tag division has just been put on notice well folks still to come up next is our hell in a cell match Kenny Omega versus The Undertaker these two men are going to fight inside the cage but this is a match that dates all the way back to their first encounter at Wrestlemania 4 and it's Kenny Omega with the slap to The Undertaker and now a big time Tombstone pile driver and The Undertaker has defeated Kenny Omega here tonight at Wrestlemania. Kenny, you should have stayed down when you had the chance. Now, you are just another soul on The Undertaker's path of destruction. Now, me and my ministry will continue to wreak havoc across NLW. The Undertaker watching his minions, the Ascension in action here tonight. But look out from behind! Who is that cameraman? And it's Kenny Omega! Kenny Omega disguised and pulls one over on the dead man. And oh my goodness, the Young Bucks have been assaulted and taken out by the Ministry. Clearly the Undertaker trying to get to Kenny Omega. Undertaker, you can beat me up as much as you want, but do not get my friends involved in this. Bring out any one of your henchmen and I will beat their ass live tonight. And Kenny Omega somehow, someway defeats Viscera with the V-Trigger. But look out from behind, The Undertaker hitting the tombstone, sending a message to Kenny Omega. You think you can keep me down, Undertaker? I'm still standing. I want a rematch inside Hell in a Cell. Is Omega insane? Kenny Omega may have signed his own death wish. Is this what you want, Kenny? A grave with your name on it? Because that's where you're headed. At Enter the Dragon, Hell in a Cell, I will put you in the ground six feet under. I don't want to wait for Enter the Dragon, Undertaker, come down to this ring and let's fight right now. Well, Omega getting what he wanted, but Hell in a Cell coming early. And it was a ruse, a setup, the Undertaker in the Ministry assaulting Kenny Omega. And Enter the Dragon, inside Hell in a Cell, you will, you will feel my fury. Rest in peace. And now here we are. The first match they had at WrestleMania 4, The Undertaker defeated Kenny Omega. Now it has come to this. A Hell in a Cell match here tonight at Enter the Dragon. That is 20 feet high. Two miles of chain. It can be your friend, it can also be your enemy. And we'll wait. The arrival of the cleaner, Kenny Omega. And you look into the eyes of Kenny Omega. He has never stepped in a match quite like this in his career before. And you know what? I'm sure he'd have it. Never any other way. He asked for this. Kenny Omega made the challenge for this Hell in a Cell match. Many people thought he was crazy. Many people thought he was insane. But tonight, the one-winged angel steps foot inside Hell in a Cell. And that is not the look of a man who hasn't thought this through. I'm sure he's been thinking of this since the moment he made the challenge. But he is not stepping in Hell in a Cell with any ordinary man. As the lights 
locked him on this arena. Kenny Omega is stepping in the ring with a phenom, a dead man, The Undertaker. The Undertaker wanted to end the career of Kenny Omega at WrestleMania and he did not get the job done. Tonight though, his mission is to end Kenny Omega once and for all. The Undertaker has built up his Ministry of Darkness around him with the additions of Pentagon, who is now on the shelf. The additions also of the Ascension and Viscera. But tonight, Undertaker is left alone, locked inside Hell in a Cell. And Kenny Omega tells him to bring it on and this Hell in a Cell match is underway. And these two warriors beating each other up and what a boot by Kenny Omega. But the Undertaker comes right back at him with a series of shots of his own. And the Snake Eyes. But a Hurricane Rana from Kenny Omega. And Omega, Rise of the Terminator, coming his way. No, The Undertaker back in with the diving clothesline, wiping out Omega. And the cleaner, he asks for this matchup. And already, do you think he's regretting it? As Und Undertaker throws him into the side of the cage and a dive over the top. The Undertaker wipes out Kenny Omega. The Undertaker flying through the air and crushes Kenny Omega. But my God, look at the height he gets. Over the top, crashing down onto Omega. And now on the shoulders and sent into the steel. The Undertaker, his mission is to destroy Omega, but look at Omega. He's got that fire extinguisher from underneath the ring and now sprays it in the eyes of the Undertaker and uses it as a weapon. No disqualifications in this one. Only way to win is pinfall or submission in the center of the ring. And a chair shot from Omega. And where is Omega going now? He's climbing the side of this cage with that steel chair and look at that. The Ollie on the back with the steel chair. Driving it, stomping into the Undertaker. And the Undertaker's been knocked a, a bit loopy here. And look at Omega using that table to run up and deliver the drop kick into the side of the cage. Kenny Omega may be a man-man, but he's also calculated. You see that on display with the missile drop kick from the top rope. As Kenny Omega waits for him, but my God. A sickening chair shot to the skull of Kenny Omega. And The Undertaker, oh my god, look at that strength. Press slamming Omega into the side of the steel cage. Absolutely unbelievable. Let's take a look at this again. Throwing him into the side of the cage wall. And Kenny Omega in a lot of trouble now as The Undertaker brings in the steel stairs. And not a choke slam. Going for a choke slam on the steel, but turns it around and a tiger suplex. The snap dragon suplex, and oh my goodness, look at this! A double underhook pile driver on the stairs. Driving the Undertaker neck first on the steel. And picks him up. You can't escape. In for the cover and a kick out by The Undertaker. But where is Omega going now? What is he... Whoa, no. Oh my god. He's brought in the bottom wire bat, but a boot from The Undertaker stops that from being used against him. And look at this now. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Driving. Raking that bottom wire bat in the face of Omega. The Bob Razor Wire on his skull. And look at this again. Trying to rake him and fish hook with that Bob Wire bat. 
and now going to rake the face of Kenny Omega in the steel cage. That wire mesh and a catapult into the side of the cage and crushes him as well. And meanwhile, Omega sent back in. And the bear hug. Folks, this is only the fourth ever NLW Hell in the Cell match, and for good reason. It is brutal. As Omega drives. Undertaker with that DDT on that barbed wire bat. And drives it into the skull. And another shot. No, the Undertaker has him held for the choke slam. The Undertaker dropping Omega with the choke slam. And now the Undertaker wants to put it away. Tombstone coming. But Omega fights it. Going for the one winged angel. But now chokes Omega. And a low blow with that barbed wire bat. And drop kicks him. And look at the way the Undertaker landed. He's caught up in the ropes. And now raking that barbed wire bat in the face of the Undertaker. The Undertaker having that bat raked against his face. And that allows Omega to get out of it. And running off the ropes. Kenny Omega diving over. But caught. And the last row through the table. The last ride driving Kenny Omega through the table against the side of that cage. But we have to take a look back, back at this again because this is incredible. He did it at WrestleMania as well. Look at this. And drives him right through the table. It's absolutely incredible. Now throws him into the cage wall again. Oh no, look at this now. Barbed wire board brought into play. And wants to deliver a choke slam onto it. But flips out of it and delivers a V-trigger. And another V-trigger to the side of the skull of the Undertaker. And then one lasting blow to the back of the skull. And now Kenny Omega trying to lift him. Can he do it? Was a powerbomb and back dropped onto the barbed wire. The flesh of Kenny Omega grating on the barbed wire. And a chair shot from The Undertaker to the spine of the cleaner. And Omega is in trouble. Tombstone. The Undertaker wants to spike him. But a reverse into a poison spike Rana. The Poison Spike Rana reversal from Omega. And drop kicks The Undertaker into the side of the cage. And where is Omega going now? Omega has climbed the side of the hell in a cell and a moonsault. A moonsault from the side of the cage. And Kenny Omega now bringing out more hardware, more tables as Omega tries to take out The Undertaker. And check this out again. The Poison Spike Rana, and then climbing the side of the cage to deliver a moonsault. This has been intense as we know it would be, and explosive, and now Omega concocting some sort of structure with those tables. But the steel stairs off the skull. And The Undertaker wipes out Omega and delivers a slam on the steel stairs as well. And now looks at those tables and, oh my goodness. Undertaker wants the last ride through the tables, but look out. Omega hanging on to the top of the Hell in a Cell. Omega holding on to the top and dives down the court. And the Tombstone Pile Driver. But Omega kicks out. Somehow, someway, Kenny Omega kicks out of the Tombstone Pile Driver. How is he still in this? It is absolutely incredible what these two men will go through to hurt each other as Omega miscalculated that dive and got hit with a tombstone but somehow managed to kick out. I can't believe it. 
And The Undertaker can't believe it also. He's raking the face of Omega in the side of the cage and he's back in, but Omega with a chest shot off the skull. And now throws the steel stairs into the face of Undertaker. And the dead man in trouble. And a spine buster on the barbed wire and he still kicks out. What more does he have to do? And the barbed wire board against the spine of the Undertaker and a V-trigger to it. The V-trigger to the barbed wire crushing the spine of the Undertaker and he is in big trouble. But, oh wait a minute. Oh wait a minute, here comes the Ministry of Darkness and look at the, the strength of Viscera. He ripped open the door and a V-trigger to him. Viscera powerfully ripping the door off its hinges and a rise of the Terminator Tope Con Hello. And Omega and The Undertaker on the outside of the cage and what the hell? Where is. Oh my god. The Undertaker scaling the side of the hell in the cell. And now Kenny Omega joins him. And Omega and The Undertaker. Now going to fight on top of Hell in a Cell. And the Snapdragon on the top of the Hell in a Cell and a stomp as well. Kenny Omega's a madman. And an arm drag for good measure as well. And now, oh my god, v trigger though! Oh my god, that was close. Undertaker nearly fell off the Hell in a Cell. And he's hanging on by a thread. Oh no. Omega thrown by the throat. And oh my god! Good god almighty, he fell from the hell in the cell. And the Undertaker looks down at the corpse he just threw off of this roof. Look at this again. From the top of Hell in a Cell. Thrown off as we look again in slow motion. That's actually insane. Words cannot describe it. And The Undertaker may have won this one already. And look at, look at Omega. Omega stirring. Somehow. What is he doing? What is... What the hell is he doing? He is climbing back to the top of Hell in a Cell. And The Undertaker wailing away on him. But how is Omega still fighting? But a chokeslam on top of the roof. Omega. It may be a matter of time before it's over for him. And The Undertaker wants to finish it with a tombstone. But a V-trigger from Omega. Where the hell did he find that from? Oh no, my. Kenny Omega. Oh no. On the shoulders. And the one-winged angel. Through the roof. has defeated The Undertaker here in Hell in a Cell. An absolutely incredible just I'm honestly speechless. They fell through the roof. We have to look at the replays of this one. I mean, you hit the tombstone, Omega kicks out, he hits a V-trigger, then the Ministry gets involved, but Omega manages to wipe them out, and then this. I thought it was over. Omega getting thrown from the top out of the cell, comes back up to hit a V-trigger, and then turning the tombstone into a one-winged angel through the roof, through two tables to the canvas below. And now the Ministry checking over their leader, but I can tell you for certain, both The Undertaker and Kenny Omega 
will never, ever be the same again after this matchup. It is absolutely insane what these two men put each other through. The Undertaker laid out and Kenny Omega defeats the dead man inside hell in a cell. But that is not all folks. Still to come is our main event. It is for the NLW Championship, a last man standing match. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Daniel Bryan. And this feud started way back at WrestleMania when Bryan won the world title. Daniel Bryan takes out Shinsuke Nakamura and Daniel Bryan has done it. Daniel Bryan is the new NLW Champion. The boyhood dream has come true here tonight at WrestleMania. It's Shinsuke Nakamura! We haven't seen this man since WrestleMania and he's picking up where he left off with Daniel Bryan. Shinsuke Nakamura with a Kinshasa. Now he's set his sights on what he wants. A kid shot to the back of Daniel Bryan. Shinsuke Nakamura, son, I'll give you a world title match against Daniel Bryan if you so want it. I want your ass in that ring one on one. Look who's back, Daniel Bryan, with a series of chair shots to the spine of Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm going to stand high and enter the dragon. Still, the NLW world champion, because Shinsuke Nakamura, I am going to be the last man standing. Well, that is how we got here tonight. And we may have had one hell of a Hell in a Cell match here tonight. But we are far from done with the action. This is your main event. And the King of Strong Style is about to enter the Dragon. Shinsuke Nakamura had been out of action since WrestleMania. When he returned, he returned with an impact, sending Daniel Bryan through the Titan Tron screen. And from there, he committed a series of attacks, all to get the champion's attention and to get this world title opportunity. At WrestleMania, he was unsuccessful. Tonight, he hopes his fortunes will be different. But Nakamura, to win the world title tonight, he must remain as the last man standing. And as the challenger awaits in the ring, we are about to be graced with the presence of the NLW champion, Daniel Bryan. The American Dragon here tonight. He is going into battle, a war with an old rival. These two have been feuding for the better part of an entire year. And tonight, we must find a winner. Who will be the last man standing in this last man standing match? We're about to find out. Nakamura seems nonplussed. He doesn't want to start this. And the bell sounds to get a main event. Oh my God. The keen shots are out of the gate. One. And is Shinsuke Nakamura Three. gonna win the world title already here Four. tonight? Five. Brian is dazed. Six. But sees his stumbling and Nakamura with a series of knees. And a stomp on the spine for good measure and now the reverse exploder. Nakamura out of the gate with a keen chasser and wants to put a second. But the boost psycho knee. Daniel Bryan wiping out Nakamura with a psycho knee. Three. And now the referee four, begins his count. Five. Not even a six, minute in. 
and already both guys have hit their finishing manoeuvres but Nakamura back to his feet but not for long that crushing German suplex to the King of Strong style and Shinsuke Nakamura on the outside here comes Daniel Bryan for a tope oh my goodness Nakamura wiping out Bryan with that kick Two. Three. Daniel Bryan was flying in mid-air as the referee halfway Five. through his count and he uses the ring apron to get back to his feet and Nakamura with the ring bell and uses it to drive a knee between the bell and the skull of Daniel Bryan remember no disqualifications in this matchup the only way to win is to incapacitate your opponent for a 10 count and Bryan went for the tope but Nakamura was there with the boot to the face and now ramming the boot in the face of Bryan and the kick from Nakamura to Daniel Bryan as Bryan is placed on the tart rope and a knee right to the gut Brian down on the outside and now going to try and use a submission, a triangle in between that ring post and Nakamura taunting Brian but Daniel Bryan drop kicking the steel into the knees of Nakamura and that's a wise strategy and a DDT from Daniel Bryan to Shinsuke Nakamura three Brian Four. with a tornado DDT on the steel five. but Nakamura back up at the count of five and goes back in but Daniel Bryan on the top rope goes for the diving headbutt but dives right into the triangle choke Nakamura with a triangle choke applied deep onto Daniel Bryan Daniel Bryan is fading fast One. And the referee begins his count again. Two, three. I think he may be knocked four, out. Five. Six. He's stirring. Seven. Referee up to seven, but Brian back to his feet. And now from the second rope, the King Shasa. That knee strike to the back of the head. It's well documented the concussion problems Brian has had. And Nakamura. Going for the Kinshasa, but misses. And now, a couple of yes kicks. But misses the last one, and pushed out of the ring. Nakamura saved himself that time. And look at that. Brian resourceful, bringing the table out, and whacking it in the face of Nakamura. And oh, look at this, he's got two tables. Two tables set up on the outside. And Daniel Bryan wants to suplex Nakamura through them, maybe. Oh, he's close. But comes back in. And a German suplex as Nakamura falls to the outside again. Nakamura. And you see he's dazed. Daniel Bryan on the top rope and dives, but crashes and burns. This table was reinforced after the last match. And Brian fell to the full brunt of it. And Nakamura with a Kinshasa. One. The running knee on that announce table. Two. And Daniel Bryan is now flat. Three. Four. Referee up to five. Five. Daniel Six. Bryan trying to stir. Seven. Can he make it to his feet? Eight. Yes, he does just about watch this again Brian from the tight rope crashing into the announce table which did not give way and then Nakamura with the knee strike but Brian is up at 8 but now Nakamura with a table brought in Daniel Bryan placed on top what is going through the King of Strong Style's mind not a suplex from there maybe no Daniel Bryan stops him and a sunset flip powerbomb through the table Two. Three. Daniel Bryan back on Four. his feet the sunset flip Five. through the table in that sunset Six. bomb 
and oh my wants to go for the psycho knee Nakamura back on his feet goes to the knees but caught out and through to the outside through two tables one two Daniel three, Bryan sent crashing through the wood four, as the count begins five six Seven, Referee is now up to seven. Eight. eight now. And somehow, some way, Daniel Bryan makes it back to his feet. Check this out again. Went for the running knee. And then boom. Power bomb through two tables as Nakamura wonders what he has to do. What more can you do to Daniel Bryan? That'll do it. A stiff chair shot to the skull. And the King Shasa to the back of the head again. Daniel Bryan has fought the odds before. But I think it may be over for him right now. Nakamura going for the King Shasa. But the chair thrown at the face. And the yes lock. The yes lock applied with that. What is that? A kendo stick? That kendo stick wrenching at the flesh. Oh, Shinsuke Nakamura, and look at this. Oh, he used, tried to use it on Brian, but Brian blocked it. And a kendo stick shot to the spine. Nakamura. Brian waiting. Here he comes, going for the Psycho and at the same time, a keen One. This is exactly how Three. their first match together ended here in NLW Four. when both men hit Five. their finishers. There Six. was a 10 count in that match. It was ruled a draw. Seven. Will it be a draw here tonight? Eight. Nakamura back to his feet. Nine. Referee up to nine, but Brian on his feet. What a war we are witnessing live tonight at Enter the Dragon. Still in the fight, still on their feet. Brian went for the knee. Nakamura hit the Kinshasa at the same time. I thought we were in for a draw. And now these two men want hand to hand combat. Brian says, bring it on. But Nakamura collapses. The toll of this match may have been very greatly affected on Nakamura, but a low blow. A low blow from Nakamura. And we saw that in their first match together as well before WrestleMania. And oh my God, we know what happened before Nakamura tries to send him with a key shot. But Brian was there to reverse Nakamura through the Titan Tron. And a kick from Nakamura. Nakamura sent Daniel Bryan through the Titan Tron screen. Oh my God, no. Look at that. He tried to drop that vending machine onto Brian. That would have crushed him. And they're in the backstage area now. Fighting just behind the curtain in gorilla position. And they're very high up now. And a keen shot to Daniel Bryan. One. Two. And the referee on the floor. Three. He's counting. Four. As Brian may have been knocked out by that Five, shot. Six. Ref up to six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And somehow he's back on his feet. But Nakamura wants another keen shot. So goes for it but misses. And oh, look at this. Well, we're right behind the Titan Tron here. Right behind the stage. They're on the platform. And oh my god! your NLW champion but I am in shock 
I am in disbelief of what we just saw. Daniel Bryan. Well, we're just going to have to take a look at the replay here. I thought it was a double knockout at that point. And then when Nakamura tried for a second time to put Bryan through the screen, he missed. Then the King's Shots are on the top of that stage. And Daniel Bryan running along to deliver that running drop kick, sending Nakamura off of the stage through that electrical equipment. And with that, Daniel Bryan is your winner. And Nakamura being placed on that stretcher, he is in a bad way right now. But you do what you have to when the world title is on the line. Daniel Bryan is still your world heavyweight champion and he remains the last man standing.